all these different places on Congress and you learn how the government works and then they send you forth into the world. Most of the programs, 70% of the people end up going to the Department of Energy or Department of State, Department of Defense, um, the National Science Foundation, National Institute of Health in paid positions by that particular organization. A very smaller group called the Congressional Fellows, about 30 of us, then get sent up to Capitol Hill to work. Those congressional fellows are paid for by their societies. So typically a society provides a stipend, the ANS stipend is $50,000, and you get sent up to Capitol Hill. When you get there, you have to find a place that will take you. And so I ended up in uh, Senator Hagel's office, that's a story in itself. Um, Oak Ridge National Laboratory had Tim Valentine that worked in Senator um, Lamar's office. And so it's a great opportunity to see what's going on. So in D.C. I had the opportunity of seeing the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership grow. And I really felt that it started, or momentum started, when pr the Prime Minister from India came to visit President Bush in July or so of 2005. And when they got done with their meeting and came out and gave the public release, they used the N-word in their presentation. You know what the N-word is? Nuclear power. Okay? So they talked about that cooperation. And that program at the time was called GENI, Global Energy Nuclear Initiative or something like that. And I think the uh, marketing people realized that genie out of the bottle would not be a good term to use. So they went to the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership. Now what is interesting, the Energy Policy Act passed in August of 2005, signed into law by President Bush in New Mexico, August 8th. And then the budget starts rolling out in September. Now in the Energy Policy Act, they authorize... 125 million for the next generation nuclear power plant, correct? Appendix C of the nuclear chapter. However, when the budget rolled out in September, less than a month later, the next generation nuclear power plant had no funding, wasn't even listed. Why was that? Well, it was this new thing called the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership. So Global Nuclear Energy Partnership, nobody had ever heard about, was now a line item at how much? $250 million. So now if you're Senator Craig from the state of Idaho and you've worked to get that legislation put in for the next generation nuclear power plant, are you happy or sad? This is not a hard question. My kids could answer this. You are sad, right? You are not smiling. And that's when the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership started getting a lot of undercurrents because people were worried about what's going to happen because of Generation 4 program. And what happened to funding for universities? How much did you get funded? Zero. And it was all because of the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership. Now, there was other reasons given, and I've been in those conversations. But that's how this kind of... So at this point in November and December, this was definitely a four-letter word. Not just... Well, there's some people picking up the humor there in the back row. Thanks a lot. Now, it rolled out. Um, they thought that President Bush would talk about it in the State of the Union address. In 2006, he did not, and it wasn't until February 4th or so that Secretary Bodman introduced the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership. It's a, it's a big thing. I mean, it has, it's a bold policy initiative that wants to make lots of nuclear power, wants to manage a long-term waste problem, and reduce proliferation. And so those are those three things here. I think for the first time, it acknowledges that you have an energy asset in spent nuclear fuel. And so that's how the program got started. Um, General Electric looked at it and we said, we would like to participate in this space. We think we have this reactor that we talked about called PRISM, and we like this technology of electro-refining that was developed at Argonne National Laboratory. We put those two technologies together at a place that we call Morris, Illinois, and we think we could do those initial prototypes that you could go forward with if you chose to do that. This is kind of the, the breakdown of GNEP. If you look at their seven different sort of goals, and look at all the different sort of programs they have. Really, GINA provides that organization framework, if you will, to go forward. And we think kind of the key is this advanced burner reactor. And the reason for that is that you're taking that long-lived stuff in spent nuclear fuel. You're extracting it out into three different piles. One is uranium. And that uranium can be used in two different places. One, GE has gotten a new technology called Silex, so you can enrich it with lasers. Or you can take that uranium and send it north to Canada, because can-dos like 
um, enrichment at 0.9 or so. You take the actinides, put those in a fast reactor, and then the fission products go off to a geological repository. So this is kind of um, the view or the model that General Electric has. This is what we submitted to the Department of Energy in September. They came out with an expression of interest August 14th. We assembled an industrial team, and we expressed interest not only in the fast reactor called PRISM, but also on our approach for fuel separation. We also put in our Morris, Illinois site to be studied. Um, we were granted an award last Monday for $1.5 million to do a 90-day study on the Morris facility about its suitability for deployment of a fast reactor and of the fuel cycle. And with that, with 10 minutes left, I will open it up to questions. Uh, good. Go ahead. Uh, wait for the mic, I think. Larry, Larry, wait for the mic. So we can get this, we can get yeah. you on record. Uh, Eric won't have to repeat it. At the um, ANS meeting in Albuquerque, they had a video conference with the two senators from New Mexico, one a Democrat and one a Republican, and the question was asked about uh, what the Democrats would think about GNET. And it was kind of... Uh, Waffly, I thought. In other words, uh, we have to rethink that and so on. What are your thoughts about the, the political issues with Gina? Thank you for that insightful question, Mr. Miller. The Global Nuclear Energy Partnership, I think, these are all my personal, patient, or personal opinions and not those of my employer. I think the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership will cross into the next administration and let's assume that's democratic for a moment, all right? Just like Clinton's administration had a hydrogen program and also had a clean coal program and that crossed into the Bush administration, but it was renamed. I, I forget the name changes, but we still had a hydrogen program. We still had clean coal, but it was renamed. Now that Senator Reid is the Senate Majority Leader, the chances of the Senate Majority Leader allowing a bill out of the committee on Yucca Mountain or those sort of things to pass through without the sort of things that the Senate can do because they're a consensus sort of body uh, are probably some of none. What GNEP offers is an opportunity to re-look really at how we're going to deal with spent nuclear fuel and um, be careful here. I, I see the Democrats could rally behind the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership to extract that stuff before you put it in the ground. Because that waste form is a little bit better, the metallic sort of waste form or the zeolite that you have with those fission products is a, it's probably a better waste form than what you have now with spent nuclear fuel. I think I'll stop at that. <laughs> okay, any other questions? 